that's the crew. Uh, Garth Pollock and myself on the left, Joe Engel, Dick Thule on the right, Enterprise in the background. This was actually the rollout <coughs> in Palmdale, California, where it was assembled. While well, we were all the elders were assembled at that facility. This was actually the first flight that was killed on off. This is Dick Thule and uh, Joe Engel. With the lighter orbiter we flew, it was 150,000 pounds. Uh, the descent angles, as you can see, is much deeper than the current shuttle, which is about 22 degrees. Uh, ours were like 24, 26 degrees. This is the Flight 8, uh, the only flight that I uh, flew to land on a runway. The runway at Edwards is very comparable to what's at Kennedy, 15,000 foot long. 1,500 foot over on each end. Now we're the, uh, at morning of uh, big day, three flight one. Cardo and I fly on board. Most things at Everest started very, very early in the morning. In the high desert there, uh, in a little valley. The winds kicked up and awfully late morning. Uh, and the air got rough, hurtful. So we always did most of our testing uh, very early in the morning. A tug is pushing the 747 out. Uh, it's kind of a strange thing when you're sitting on top there, uh, looking out any of the windows in the orbiter. You can't see the 747. Uh, and you have no engine, so it's kind of like magic. Taxi, it's up taking off here, and uh, like they have on a flying uh, magic carpet. This combination, though, and one thing you'll notice too is we're cocked up. We're, we're not in the same configuration as when they ferry the shuttle <coughs> cross country using 7.7 where it's more in a streamlined position. We were cocked up to uh, help with the separation uh, when we cut it free. And in that respect, we were also generating lift for the 7.7. Uh, here is a sequence where it's a not really a steep dive, a shallow pushover to get to a certain speed. Gets rolled into the 747, we call a launch ready, push the button, and we were up and away. Uh, and actually, if you look at it, uh, the relative to that lift I'm talking about, we dropped the 747. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just another shot of that uh, separation sequence, so it might get a nice pretty good picture here. <clears throat> Those trails are vortex trails coming off our wing tips where the air spills at the end of the wing. And quite surprising, the air was moist enough in that high desert uh, to produce those that day. Normally, we were dry air. Uh, vehicle flew uh, very well. We lost one computer right at separation. Uh, the other three in the front set uh, did what they were supposed to do. And, to a simple box pattern on that first flight just to uh, get basic aerodynamic data primarily verify wind tunnel through the very deep range, but uh, nothing fancy just to make sure we got it on the ground. We, the first flight. we had no backup vehicle control, also another concern. We went down uh, to use the end of that pattern the longest runway on the lake bed, north south runway at Edwards. That dry lake bed is about eight miles long. <clears throat> and you can also veer left or right off the lake bed in either direction, probably a quarter mile, and still be on good terrain. <laughs> Vehicle handled well, as you saw, in ground effect. It's a nice soft touchdown. Uh, uh, we worried a little bit about that because that's one thing you can't verify in the wind tunnel. So you get close to the ground and that effect. Turned out to be literally perfect. Uh, you get the vehicle set up close to the ground, uh, you're close to you can almost just really go hands off and itself. This is Gardo and I are coming out the uh, bottom edge. We'll spin uh, switch a little bit now. Uh, 